My new Don Nero, give the Lord a big hand of praise and please you may be seated in his presence. 
You're welcome into the special miracle service. We shall be calling ourselves to worship reading from the book of Psalm chapter 23. Psalm 23, all to the last verse, which I'll be reading the scriptures responsibly. I take verse 1, and you take the next verse. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Verse 2 together. Shall we take verse 2 together again? He restored my soul. He leaded me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Shall we take verses together as a family? Surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Shall we take verse 6 again for emphasis? Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Again, you are welcome. Give the Lord a big hand. It's my new dawn era. Shall we listen to the following faith tabernacle announcements? Number one, covenant of prayer continues tomorrow, Monday to Saturday. We must all take advantage of this platform for our spiritual edification. Time is 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Number two, Believers Foundation class holds this Monday for all new converts in various locations cut across Lagos and Ota. All our new converts and new members are admonished to take advantage of this very important platform for spiritual empowerment that will result in victorious living. Time is 6 to 7.30 p.m. Number three, midweek communion service holds this Wednesday both here in Canaanland and at all zonal fellowship centers in Lagos, Ota, and Environs. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in a fast and break with the communion. Time is 6 p.m. Number four, praise the Lord. All our new members and first-timers are to know that Yoruba's translation takes place at the faith gallery, entrance gallery during all services. All those who require Yoruba translation should take advantage of this provision. Number five, praise the Lord. The 2018 annual International Youth Alive Convention is only three weeks away. Hallelujah. The details are as follow. The date is the 3rd, 31st of July, Tuesday, on to Saturday, the 4th of August, 2018. Here at Canaanland. To this end, all youths are admonished to pray, plan, and prepare to attend this life-transforming and destiny-changing event. It shall indeed be a mountain of transformation for every participant in Jesus' name. All youths are to wait behind for a special briefing at the Faith Academy Multipurpose Hall after each Sunday service today. Number six, praise the Lord. Last Friday, the 13th of July, was the fifth convocation ceremony of the Landmark University, our second university that is owned and run by the church. The graduating class included 405 graduates with 38 in the first class category. Hallelujah. For each free running of the university for the past seven years and the numerous awards received, a special Thanksgiving session is holding at the Landmark University Chapel today. To God be all the glory. Number seven, praise the Lord. The 13th Convocation Ceremony of Covenant University, our first university, comes up this Friday, the 28th of July, 2018, at the Covenant University Chapel. Time is 9 a.m. Please check the university website, which is shown on the screen, for further details. Again, to God alone be all the glory. Number eight, good news. <laughs> Landmark University 2018 post-UTME screening. Post-UTME screening for 2018 admission into full-time degree programs at Landmark University is currently ongoing. In addition to the regular on-campus screening, 
interested candidates can now be screened online at any remote location of their choice. With the online option, candidates do not have to be physically present at the university for the screening exercise. More details are available at admission.lmu.edu.ng, again, as shown on the screen. Number nine, Winner Satellite Fellowship, a house-to-house -house fellowship, holds every Saturday. We are all expected to be part of this for spiritual growth and development. Time is 5 to 6 p.m. Finally, number 10, praise the Lord. Next Sunday, the 22nd of July, 2018, shall be a covenant day of recovery. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come expecting definite encounters with the prophetic word. Service schedule remains as usual. Jesus is Lord. You will be the next to be announced globally in Jesus' name. It's testimony time. Please listen to these documented testimonies and be blessed. Number one, Divine Favor Unlimited. In November 2011, I miraculously got a job I never applied for. I was referred to the company by an unknown source. I started as an operation executive, but was stuck, stagnant even when I was overdue for a confirmation. Later, the company began to lay off workers and slash salaries. When I got my letter, I remember that Bishop Oedipo says, I am too tight secured. So I approached my managing director violently after going through my tight booklet. I told him, sir, I cannot afford to have my salary slashed. He asked me what I wanted, and I asked for an increase. Immediately, he called the head of resource management, and I was granted 40% increase in my salary. Put your hands together for Jesus. I was also promoted to the position of business development manager. I give God all the glory. The testifier is Iloba C. Put your hands together for Jesus if you're happy about that. Number two, divine promotion via prophetic declaration. I met with Bishop Oyedekbo at Sango Under Bridge, where he prayed for us and invited us to church. On the 25th of March, 2018, I came to the church for the second time on the Covenant Day of Business Breakthrough with my point of contact for my career and business as was instructed, trusting God for my long overdue promotion at work. The following day, when I got to work, I learned that some names were released for promotion and mine was excluded. I responded to them by saying, no promotion can be done without my name inclusive. The bishop has declared that. Another list was later sent and my name was included. I have been promoted to the post of inspector of police after many years of unusual delay. God has favored me and answered my prayers on this breakthrough grant. I am grateful to the God of Bishop Oyedipo. I say a big thank you to Bishop David Oyedipo. The testifier is Igwe Chukuma. You are the next to testify. It's my new down era. Please listen to the epistle from the apostle over this commission titled Declaring Operation Must Abide. Praise the Lord. As we all are aware, our prophetic church growth agenda for the year captioned Operation Take Your 34 Christ continues up until October 7, 2018. We give God thanks for how far he has helped us, particularly in the just concluded first segment of this prophetic agenda tagged Operation 615. However, we must understand that we are not only chosen and ordained to bring forth fruit, that is, lead people to salvation. We are also called to take responsibility for making disciples of our converts, that is, to ensure their retention both in the faith and in the house of God for life. We understand from scriptures that getting people saved and gathering them into the storehouse that is the church is the will of God. As we all know, when we pray according to the will of God, he hears and answers us. Therefore, 
the same way we have to go to see souls saved, we must pray and follow them up to see them established in the faith and in the church. Biblical requirement for securing establishment of our new convert. One, we must continue to engage in effectual fervent prayer for them. Two, we must ensure that they are regular in church services. And three, we must encourage them to attend Believer's Foundation class. Four, we must ensure that they belong to Winner's Satellite Fellowship, the grassroots family unit of the church. And five, we must encourage them to join any service group of their choice in the church so they can begin to enjoy the blessings that accrue from service. Six, we must ensure that they are baptized in the Holy Ghost for a most fulfilling adventure in the faith. Seven, we must ensure that they are baptized in water because it is a requirement for fulfillment of all righteousness. And eight, we must encourage them to partake of the basic certificate course, BCC, at Wobi, Word of Faith Bible Institute, our Bible training school for accelerated spiritual growth that will result to their establishment and enthronement in the kingdom. Furthermore, we must endeavor to maintain regular contact with them concerning their well-being and continue to release blessings upon them either through phone, SMS, or any other social media platform. We should also be sensitive to know when any of our new convert requires our support in one way or the other, such as transportation to and from church and etc., to respond as able. Therefore, for the next five weeks, that is from Monday, July 16 to Sunday, August 19, 2018, we shall be focusing on ensuring that all our new converts of the year are fully established in church by engaging all of the above-mentioned strategies and many more as may be inspired by the Holy Ghost. I pray that not one soul that has stepped through the doors of our churches since the year began shall step out. They shall all abide to enjoy the fullness of the blessings that the liberation mandate carries in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember, as the church continues to grow, God will continue to change the levels of all engaging winners. Therefore, make that, this tax a must, and you shall make the most of it both in returns and in results. Remain ever blessed. Jesus is Lord. Put those ends together for the Lord. It is my new dawn era. This afternoon is my privilege to welcome a number of us who are here today worshiping for the first time on Sunday like this at the Faith Tabernacle. If today is your first time at the Faith Tabernacle on Sunday, please would you rise on your feet this afternoon. Rise on your feet wherever you are. Give Jesus a big hand, everybody. As they rise everywhere, it's worthy of praise and worthy of glory. Please remain standing in God's presence. Our officials will put into your hand a special welcome package. Along with it, they will give you a slip to fill. As soon as you receive both the package and the slip, please take your seat and begin to fill that slip in the course of this welcome. Ensure you receive your copy and then be seated and begin to fill that slip in the course of this welcome. I want to welcome you on behalf of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, and on behalf of his servant, the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Oedipo. I want you to know that you have come today to a mountain of God and a city of refuge, and that means every siege against your life and destiny comes to an end today in the name of Jesus Christ. According to scriptures, we are made to understand that the company you keep determines what accompanies you. Lot was with Abraham, and the blessing on Abraham began to manifest on Lot. You have come today to this company of the blessed. The blessings of God here will begin to manifest upon your life. You have come to this ever-testifying family. The testimonies of Jesus shall become your experience from now. You have come to this ever-advancing family. Advancement shall become your experience in the name of Jesus. And you have come to this favored family. The favor of God shall decorate you from this day. However, in order to sustain your experience of the blessings of God available to you here, you must get planted and get rooted. The Bible says those who are planted in God's house, they will flourish in the court of our God. 
Therefore, my charge to you is settle down here. Engage every word that comes from this altar in teachings, instructions, prophetic directions. And as you put God's word to work, his word will work wonders in every department of your life. And just like God did for Obedidom in the scriptures, who engaged with him and within three months of active engagement, God so dramatically changed his story until his testimony became the envy of the king. For you also, as you engage God by his word from this mountain, actively and continuously over the course of the next three months, within that space of time, God will dramati dramatically change your story until your testimony becomes the envy of many in the name of the Lord Jesus. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. One more time, all our first time worshipers, please rise on your feet for a word of prayer and blessing. Please rise on your feet for a word of prayer and blessing. Bow your head now as we pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you today for these precious ones that you have drawn by your mighty hand. You brought them here for a blessing, and therefore by authority this afternoon we decree them blessed. Whatever they left as a concern, Father, let it be converted to an open testimony. And in the name of Jesus, any one of them yet to be saved, we declare this day as the day of their salvation. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Please, you may be comfortably seated. Ensure that your forms are clearly completed and submitted to the official closest to you. Again, you're welcome and God richly bless you. Give Jesus a big hand, everybody. It is my new dawn era. In this special miracle service, it is offering time. I said it is offering time. If you have not done so yet, quickly begin to package your worship offering. Your tithe, which is 10% of God's increase upon your life, and any other seed that you have brought in honor of Jesus into his presence this morning, this afternoon. And as we do so, I want us to be reminded of God's word from Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. Give, it shall be given unto thee. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men bring unto your bosom. As you Present your seat before the Lord in honor of him today. Financial favor is coming back your way in the name of Jesus. Shall we rise on our feet this morning, this afternoon? Lift up your seat before the Lord. And from the depth of your heart with gratitude unto the Lord, present it right now, giving him thanks for the privilege that you have to carry seed in your hand. For he has ministered seed to you as a sower, and he is multiplying the seed as you sow it. Will you give him thanks this afternoon for the privilege that you have to be in his presence. Thank him and thank him. Bless his holy name. Father, thank you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Keep your seat lifted now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we have come before you presenting our tithes, our offerings, and various seeds. To every tither, let the heavens remain open. Let your blessings continue to pour out in the name of the Lord Jesus. To every seed sower, let the seed be multiplied in return. Cause each one that is a giver today to experience financial favor and return. We give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Amen and amen. Please be seated comfortably. Cast your seat joyfully as we receive the ministry of the Faith Tabernacle Choir.
we lift up our two hands to heaven and magnify Jesus today. Give him thanks and praise. Celebrate his faithfulness this day. In the precious name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus we are praying. Amen. The world holds the answer to every question of life. Come and learn of me and you shall find a rest for your souls. Come to me all you that labor and are heavy laden. Come and learn of me. Come and find out what the word says. Connect with the same and you shall find rest for your souls. Your time of rest has come. Your time of rest from sickness and disease has come. Your time of rest from stagnation and frustration has come. Come and learn of me and shall find rest for your souls. The Bible is the answer book of life. It provides answers to all our bugging questions. Come and learn of me and shall find rest for your souls. I pray that this month will mark the beginning of your unending rest. Rest at home. Yeah. Rest at work. Yeah. Rest in your journeys. Yeah. Rest over your spouse and children. Yeah. Rest over the works of your hand. Yeah. From this day, it shall be rest all round for you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 59, verse 8. Isaiah 59, 8. He said, the way of peace they know not. They have made, and there is no judgment in them. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. So there is the way to rest. May you locate that way today. Yeah. You can't know the way of peace and be combat with crisis. In the name of Jesus, the way of peace will be unveiled to you today. Yeah. And you begin to enjoy all and rest in all leaders of your life. Yeah. Lord, let your word come true to me today. Amen. Lift up your two hands and pray that prayer. I'm here for your word. Let your word come straight to me today. Amen. 
let your word come true to me today. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. So shall it be. Give the Lord a big hand and get seated. Amen. What is in the world that deals with all issues of life? The entrance of his wall gives light. And the dominion of light over darkness is instant and unquestionable. So when the world enters into us, every walk of darkness bow out from our life. Sickness is a walk of darkness. Space and enchantment, generational causes. At the entrance of the world, all the works of darkness bow. That's why the world is and the world delivers. In the beginning was the world, the world was God, and the world was God. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. And that light shines in darkness, and darkness can't handle it. What is in the world that provides answers to all the questions of life? We wrestle against flesh and blood, against principalities and powers. Our issues are spiritually based. All issues of our lives are spiritually based. Wicked spirits in high places, they are spiritually based. And Psalm 119, verse 130, the entrance of thy word giveth light and giveth understanding to the simple. So when that light penetrates your realm, the works of darkness loses their grip of you automatically. He sent his word and it healed them and delivered them out of all their destructions. What is in the world that he is? The light of God resides in his word. And when the word enters, you are lighted. And when you are lighted, darkness loses its grip of your life. Please understand this. These are all simple, simple things. The entrance of his word will shatter every walk of darkness in anyone's life. When his word enters, darkness disappears. In the name of Jesus, I decree an entrance of his word into your life today that will shatter every walk of darkness around your life. So nobody believes that. Let me hear your loudness. This is so important. What is in the world that provides answers to the question of our life. Is my word not as fire that burneth the chaff? Is my word not as fire, says the Lord, and like hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Now, wait a minute. Whatever chaff may have been planted in anyone's life, his word is fire. You know, our God is a consuming fire. And the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was God. So the word carries the consuming fire of God. So when the word enters, the consuming fire invades your being and burns off every chaff planted there by the devil. Somebody was reading the book when invisible battles in Congo, Kinshasa, and a human structure walked out of our life and the misfortune of our life ended. Amen. What walked that devil out? The fire of the world. So we made the fire of the world. Fire. 
I used to belong to a hunting group of young people when we were growing up. If any bush rat runs into a hole, you put fire. Amen. And you look out for the outlet where he may want to escape. As the smoke of the fire and the heat of the fire goes into the hole, he jumps out. Then we can kill it. You understand what I'm saying? When the word enters, the devil jumps out. Because the fire, he can't stand it. Now, so, the word is light to disarm the powers of darkness. The word is fire to deal with every satanic being tormenting your life. There are also barriers placed on our path. The word is hammer to break them into pieces. So as the word enters, the hammer enters. Through, through, through. And then the gate is open. These are all specific areas of challenges that the world deals with. The good news is an end has come for your looking for miracles. Amen. You just be commanding the miracles. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your struggle for survival is over today. Amen. Your struggle for survival is over today. Amen. Why am I saying this? It doesn't have to be a teaching on healing. As long as it's the word, it is the light it is the fire, it is the hammer will deliver any day, any time on any subject. That word is here for you today. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. I therefore decree an end to your struggling for survival. Say with me, enough is enough. Enough is enough. It's a language of force. Not enough is enough. Enough is enough. How dare you torment me who has been redeemed and raised up with Christ, made to sit with him in heavenly places? Enough is enough. I'm smarter than you. Enough is enough. Get your hands off my life. Enough is enough. Remember, the kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. We have, a, we have been too soft, too slow in reacting against unwanted situations. So they just stay on. They just stay on. We are busy crying to God and God is saying, deal with it. I've equipped you to deal with this. If you will say to this mountain, I won't talk to mountains for you, you'll talk to the mountains. Be removed and cast to the sea and shall not doubt in your heart, but shall believe in that what you say will come to pass. You shall have whatsoever you say. You have to. I won't do that for you. I can repent for you. I won't say nothing for you. I've given you a mouth and wisdom that none of your can resist nor gain say. So you say on. Amen. Speak on. Amen. Enough is enough. Amen. Enough is enough. Get out of my way. Enough is enough. Lose your grip of my affairs. Enough is enough. Would you pick this up? God will never address your situations for you. You have to. I have to. Life and death are in the power of your tongue. Not God's tongue. 
And every tongue shall rise against you in judgment. You shall condemn, not God. You, you. Isaiah 54, verse 17. You shall condemn. If you won't condemn it, you may as well wait for it to condemn you. You shall condemn. You shall condemn. We are the bride. Christ is the bridegroom. How dare you molest a bride of the bridegroom? Because it's ordained to enjoy the immunity of the bridegroom. You can't insult the wife of a president of any nation, particularly in this nation. And I mean to the point of slapping him. You can't. Why is the devil and his agents slapping you and hitting you here and there? No more. Enough! It's enough. Enough! It's enough. These tongues are raging against you, asking you, where is your God? And you're, eh? Okay, God, see how they're talking to me. Say, stop! Be the crying baby. Address the situation. Enough. It's enough. We are so busy talking to God when we should be issuing orders to issues that are bugging our lives. He said the victory without causes is without a way. He said have faith in God. That's how the faith of God operates. If you will say to that mountain, if you cause that mountain, it will be no more. It will be no more. So it's time to be awake and cause the molesting forces around your life. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is a language of force. It's a language of authority. You are, you are exercising your authority based on your understanding of your status in Christ and in redemption. Enough is enough. A time is coming. We won't be giving testimony of healing anymore. We won't be giving testimonies of healings anymore. Yeah. You don't be giving them to people you minister to that God healed. That I spoke by the word of the Lord and the lame jumped up and started walking. Yeah. Yeah. Enough is enough. Even your little children in, as teenagers will be ministering heavily to the afflicted. Yeah. And they will get to heal. Yeah. Enough is enough. It is Satan doing me. Enough is enough. Thank you, Jesus. That's why we began to look at our root. So we can, we can continue to command our fruits. Every child of God belongs to the tribe of Judah, the tribe of lions. Jesus came up as the lion of the tribe of Judah. Revelation 5 5. And one characteristic of the lion is that they are fearless by nature. Lions are fearless by nature. And by origin, Judah is a tribe of lions. He said, Judah, thou he who thy brethren shall praise, your hand shall be in the neck of the enemies. Their father's children shall bow down to thee. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the Lord give her from within her feet until Shiloh comes. So it's an it is a and a generational ruling house. The tribe of Judah is a generational ruling house until Jesus returns. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, sickness, disease, agents of the devil shall not rule over you anymore. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. I pray that the lion in each one will come alive today. 
And as you roar against every unwanted situation, you shall see them no more again forever. Somebody believes that, let me hear your loudest amen. As you roar against all unwanted situations around your life, you see them no more again forever. The horror of joblessness is over in your life. The horror of monitor siege is broken from your life. The horror of barrenness and miscarriage is over in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please understand that why we are lions by redemption, we must understand how to keep the lion in us alive. Among other things, the Bible said, his eyes shall be red with wine. What does it take to keep the eyes of a lion red? He said, his eyes shall be red with wine. Genesis 49 and verse 12. So it takes some spiritual brand of wine to keep the lion in you alive and prevailing. Alive and prevailing. Please understand what I'm saying. Some have been molested by sickness and disease. But when the lion in you comes alive, sickness and disease will lose their grip of you. Amen. For they shall hear your roar Amen. and fade away from their hiding Amen. places. Amen. Psalm 18 and verse 45, I mean 44 and 45. As soon as they hear me, they shall obey me. Yes. The strangers shall submit themselves to me. Yes. He said, the strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of their close places. So you are supposed to instill fear into them, not they instilling fear into you. Until you come out to roar, enough is enough. The enemy will keep on molesting your life. But if you don't know your root, you can't issue such verdict. By redemption, you belong to the tribe of lions, the tribe of Judah. That ordained to rule and to reign until Jesus comes. To rule over sickness and disease. Rule over satanic attacks. Rule over all satanic oppression. That's who you are. And what we've been trying to do the last two weeks, this is the third week now, two Sundays. This is the third Sunday, and the part three of that teaching is to unveil to us certain spiritual brands of wine that will keep our eyes red so our triumph will remain unquestionable. Our conquest will remain unchallengeable. First Sunday, we looked at the wine the Holy Ghost wine, when then we look at the revelation wine, how the revelation of the world turns you on and brings the lion in your light. Then we look at the praise wine and the testimony wine last Sunday. Now, we are looking at the vision wine and the love wine that will keep your eyes red and keep you prevailing over every unwanted situation of your life. Can I hear your amen? amen. Very quickly for the time we have, the vision wine is about how visions intoxicate a visioner or a visionary. How vision from the Lord intoxicates men and turns them loose. How people live under the influence of a vision without looking back. We saw the case of Abraham, get out of their country, to a, to a land I will show you, and I will make of the great nation. And Abraham departed without knowing where he was going. That is under the influence of the intoxicating wine of vision. Now, take your only son Isaac that you love and offer him to me as a burnt sacrifice. 
Genesis 22, and Abraham rose up early in the morning and carried a knife in his pocket and put wood on the sun that he would kill and went ahead. That is the intoxicating influence of the wine of vision. You can't stay put with a vision of the Lord. A vision of the Lord puts you on the road. Put you on the road irresistibly. He said, right the vision. Make it plain. That he may run. That he may run. That he may run. The vision that is clear puts you on the road. Put you on the road. Highly intoxicated. Yes, Every clear vision puts the individual on the road automatically. You are not struggling with it. Praise God. When Landmark University was going to start, they said they were not going to approve engineering. And I said, well, we are starting with it. <laughs> I said, now, Mr. Friend, where do you put a Greek engineering? In what faculty? He looked at me. But you approve a Greek. So will a Greek engineering be? Anyway, we are starting. Period intended there. There is no discussion. His eyes shall be red. I know who sent me. You know, it's not you who will be telling me that uh, that's not what he sent me. Were you there when he sent me? Amen. His eyes shall be red. A vision puts you on the run and makes you unstoppable. Yes, makes you what? Unstoppable. Put you on the run and makes you unstoppable. From now, no force of hell shall stop the way against you. This was a huge forest. And then a fearful, dreadful forest. Where birds sound like human beings. Where people run on the road for their life when it's past 6 o'clock in the evening. Passing on the main road. But I heard Jesus said, this is the place. Man, I was walking here in the night on my own. Put the driver and everybody on the road. I said, wait a minute, I'm coming. I mean, vision puts you on what? On the road. Let the boss line sound like him up being. Come and let us meet. He puts you on the road. On the road. On the road. When I saw Jesus carried my sickness and disease on his head, July 1979, I shouted and screamed, Yay, I can never be sick. Man, I'm there. Hallelujah. By the grace of God. Amen. Vision puts you on the road. It makes you speak the unspeakable. They are the undearable. And deal with them accordingly. Amen. Jesus brought me in this liberation mandate. Delivered it on the 2nd of May. By the 24th of May, the liberation started to manifest in our weekly service. No premonition by second. No premonition of anything. No, nothing in the air. But you can rest. He showed me the vision of Africa on my way from Zaria one day into Kaduna. I came down here the Friday that followed. At the breakthrough night, we dedicated the mission to Africa. Same week. Same week. It puts you on the wrong. You live under its intoxicating influence. Praise God. Can anybody now stand on the way and say, what do you mean a liberation mandate? <laughs> I will show you what it means. <laughs> I was there 18 long hours. It's not a discussion. Amen. It's, a, it's not for discussion. It's a mandate for delivery. Now, listen to me. In the name of Jesus, every vision required for you to fulfill destiny. You know, he said, we are, there is no vision, the people will perish. The word perish does not mean to die. It means to be stripped of honor and dignity. Whatever vision is required from heaven for your life to experience full color, 
I decree your access to it. Second is the wine of love we're talking about. Love for God is a most intoxicating virtue. Who shall separate us from the love of God that is in Christ? Romans 8 35. Shall tribulation, distress, forget it, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword? As it's written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, forget it. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. Through Christ that loved us. That's how intoxicating our love for God can be. When you are truly in love with God, no activities of hell can deter you. You don't bow to my graven image. Nebuchadnezzar said, you'll be cast into the fiery furnace. They say, we are not careful to answer you. We are not the people they threaten. Mm. <laughs> we are settled with God. Hallelujah. And our God is able to deliver us. Even if he does not, woo, we never bow to a graven image. He said, <laughs> he was biting his finger. He said, hit the furnace seven times more. They say, yes, sir. And they, all those that hit it died there anyway. And they threw these three boys there with a burning, intoxicating love for God. The fire had no smell on their bodies. Their body has moved beyond the realm that fire can impart on. That's the love, your love for God can dare any threat of fire and prevail. They said, you must not ask anything of any man except from the king. And Daniel opened his windows. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jehovah, the man of war. They said, what is it? They said, pray. Oh, God of heaven, just to let you know, my heart is fixed. I'm going nowhere. I love you unto death. And the true image is the den of lion. And the king had what he has never had. Daniel, is that God able to save you? He said, King, <laughs> I'm here having a nice time with the lion. So the Bible says in Psalms of Solomon, chapter 8 and verse 7 many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. Many waters cannot quench. Every genuine lover of God is immovable as a rock. Your touch is God. Your touch is most sensitive part. He won't bear, he won't bow, and he won't beg. Will I ever beg anybody on earth to let me worship Jesus? They better stop the fully. It won't happen. It won't happen no. in Nigeria. This will never become an Islamic state. Never. We never signed up for that as a nation. We signed up for a secular state where the freedom of worship is the natural right of every citizen. Will this ever become a full republic? Never. Never anybody or group of people should warn themselves. Never. I've been saying this for so long. I've been saying it for life. It will never happen. No gate of hell can be shut against Jesus. Never. He's the master of the universe. Oh, powers in heaven and on earth are in his hands. Therefore, never bother about the noise of Goliath. It will be short-lived. We are going to kill.
kill. Who are you going to kill? Who are the rams you are going to kill? Who are you? Where are you from? Every demonic personalities behind this assault on the church of Jesus and the minority Christians up in the middle of the belt or in the north, there are majority in the middle belt. Majority is killer. They are majority. Every attempt to annihilate will be met with divine judgment. Amen. That will be most devastating. Amen. And will cause their sting to go forth. Amen. And their evil savour to feed the air. Thank you, Jesus. In the same vein, every attempt of the wicked one to molest your life will lead to their end. Now, hear this as I begin to close. Both the law of wine and the vision wine have their base in the Holy Ghost wine. I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons shall see vision. So vision has its base in the Holy Ghost. Then the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. So our love for God is boosted by the Holy Ghost. Now there is the Holy Ghost wine, there is the vision wine, there is the Holy Ghost wine, and there is the love wine. So you are under double intoxicating influence of the wine of heaven. So you are unstoppable. You are just there. In the name of Jesus. Sickness will hear your son and disappear. Yeah. Witches will hear your son and fade away. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All you need, like a lion does, is open your mouth wide. Ah, and then 30 miles away. Every beast starts taking cover. He said, open your mouth wide and I will feel it. But my people are too decent for that. They are talking diplomatically against sickness and disease, against the oppressors. Open your mouth wide. He said, if they are hardened to me, I, would, I should have some subdued their enemies under them and turned my hands against their adversary. It's time to open wide your mouth. It's time to open wide your mouth. He has given you a mouth and wisdom that no adversary can resist, nor can say. You shall have what he, what you say. Not what God says. It is what to say based on what God says that you have. It is what to say based on what God says about you that you have. I myself took my infirmity. You took your infirmity. Yeah, I can never be sick. He said, confirmed. confirmed. You have said it. You believed it. Are you able to say it boldly so I confirm it openly? Amen. Amen. It is saying what God says boldly that commits him to confirm it openly. They were speaking boldly in the Lord. We give testimony to the word of his grace and grant us and wonder to be done by their hands. God will not confirm openly what we will not say boldly. Amen. Say it boldly. Amen. Say it boldly. Yes, say to that challenge of your life, enough is enough. Based on what God says, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. You shall be far from oppression. That's what it says. So, you receive it, you believe it, and then you boldly declare it, and God confirms it into manifestations. You won't say it boldly, God will never confirm it openly. You won't say it boldly, God will never confirm it openly. You won't say it boldly. When I saw that Jesus has a power of hell and of death, light came to me, Hallelujah. and I did a series of teachings on victory over death. 1983. Victory over death. Victory over death. It became so 
real and vivid to me. I have cheated death severally. And I'll take death forever. I'm here for a long, long time. A long, long time. Because those who serve me, the number of their days I will fulfill. So it's your right to enjoy longevity. Amen. Come and say, I'm taking it today. Take it by force. Every threat to your life, the threatener takes your place. Every plan to destroy your life, the planner goes there in your place. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. Now, this is how to terminate every threat on your life. Every word of God concerning you, receive it, believe it, and boldly declare it. And God will subdue your enemies under you and turn his hand against your adversaries. Wherever your name is mentioned for evil, he will smite them with my grain. It will degenerate to brain tumor. They will disappear as a, as a shadow. And you shall prevail by the blood of the Lamb. Let me hear your loudest amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. Your struggle for survival is over. How do I keep the lion in me alive? The wine makes your eyes red, but you need strength. He said, the lion which is strongest among beasts and turneth not away for any. Strength is the glory of the lion. Amen. And after Elijah was given the cake to eat, he went in the strength of that meat for 40 days and 40 nights to the month of God, to hold up the month of God. First Kings chapter 19 verse 8. So strength comes from meat. Strength is a product of the meat, the food we eat. No matter the excess of an athlete, if he doesn't eat, you now tell on your marks go, you will just fall. <laughs> the, on your marks, even to bend, he can't bend. He has not eaten for 30 days. He said, Go, he said, To where? <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. The strength of the lion is drawn from the lion's meat. And Jesus came and showed us the lion's meat. They say, Has somebody given you food to eat? He said, I have some meat to eat that you don't know about. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his works. My meat is to do the will. So doing the will of God is the lion's food. What is the will of God? He wants all men saved and to come in knowledge of the truth. And that's what he was doing with the woman of the Samaritan woman. And to finish his work, he says, look at, the feed is white to harvest. He that reaped, received wages as he gathers fruits unto life eternal. So reaping and gathering of fruits from the harvest feed is his will and his work. It's his will and his work. And as you stay on that, the energy and the strength of a lion continues to manifest in your life. Continues to what? Manifest, manifest in your life. And I can testify to that by the grace of God. I, did my, I was involved in my first real mission targeted so many endeavor 45 years ago. When Jesus built a church for himself within 72 days. Because I could not rest without his name in that village. Now I've been in that all along, all the way. An exciting journey. Now you know the interesting part of it? I have not lost one ounce of energy. I am on the lion's diet. 
year in, year out. Don't need no encouragement. Neither can anybody discourage me. Can they discourage you from eating? Can anybody discourage you from eating? I say, this man is eating again. Every day, every day. Abba. I say, you are a man of God. What are you doing? Can that discourage you? You know, I say, because of that, you won't eat for the next 10 days. No. No. You can't discourage somebody from his source of energy. No. <coughs> you can't. So I do that with a sense of mission. I was testifying last Sunday that during the last week of Operation 615, we got three, I mean, 2,308 souls saved. Amen. Now, I've never seen that in my life. Not even when I was growing up. And what a joy. A thousand and 312 of them were in church last Sunday. And 548 came along with them. That is, the converts came along with 548 other souls, making 1,860 that came to church from last week outreach only. I can tell you this. You keep going from strength to strength. That is the energy source for the lions, doing the will of God and being committed to his work. He wants all men saved. That's his will. He wants them to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's gathering them into church where their understanding will be opened up and they'll be established in the faith and in the church. That's his will. That's his work. Now, in the name of Jesus, your life will not run out of divine energy anymore. Therefore, operation must abide. It's another opportunity for you, for you to feed on the lion's meat so that the lion in you can come alive and prevail it. That shall be your portion. Yeah. Now, one way to a word of favor is seeking for the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things that others are dying to get shall be added to you. That's the root of all the testimonies we have been having. All these things. All, including health and all these things, all these things. Thou shalt serve the Lord thy God. He shall bless thy bread and thy water. He will take sin away from you. All these things. You shall not be buried or cast young in the land. All these things. The number of your days I fulfill. All these things. All the jargon said to that my daughter will testify today. Okay, you have hormonal imbalance. You have uh, one terrible name like that with terrible pains coming along with it. Everything clear. As she engaged in seeking first the kingdom of God, everything clears and eight years of barrenness overturned from the root. And you saw the bouncing baby came up on the platform. It, it's one way to secure unstoppable flow of favor in your life is seeking first the kingdom of God. It never ceases, it never stops. I said in that one of the services, I said, you never run out of favor running after God and the interest of his kingdom. You never run out of favor running after God and the interest of his kingdom. No matter where you find yourself, as long as your heart is pumping after God and the interest of his kingdom, you never run out of favor. You never, never run out of favor. You never, never run out of favor. You never, never run out of favor. So, every air of misfortune ends in anyone's life today. Yeah. And so shall it be for life. Yeah. This is so important. He said, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her, yea, the said time is come. Zion is the church of God in prophecies. Yeah, yes. yeah come to Mount Zion. The church of the firstborn. The church of Jesus. The church of Jesus. Zion is the church of Jesus in prophecy, which are written in heaven. Our names are written in the book of life in heaven. It's the church. He said, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon the church for the time to favor the church. Yea, the set time is come. 
for your servants in the church who are serving the interests of your kingdom. They favor the stones of Zion. And we are lively stones. They favor the people of God in charge in expressing their interest in your interest. And the dust thereof, every commandment matters to them. Therefore, the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord by your fearful favor on their lives. And all the kings of the earth shall fear your glory in them. Now, that is how to assess the realm of fearful blessings. Taking pleasure in the matters of the kingdom and favoring God's interest for the lost as a lifestyle. Then, it becomes a launching pad into the realm of fearful blessings. Fearful favor. Fearful favor. As I'm talking to you by grace, Covenant University has been the model of university education in this country. Amen. Fearful favor. Fearful favor. Jesus built the first phase of that construction in seven months. Seven. How many months? Seven. seven. With facilities for 1,500 students to, I mean, residents. I mean, faculty building ready. Ooh. All in seven months, streets and power. Fearful favor. They didn't build it by their strength. God simply had the favor run to them. Now, in the name of Jesus, that order of favor that made the hidden sphere becomes your portion from now. Yeah. Favor must be entreated. You don't wait for it or you waste your life. There is a place to stand to commit God to unleash his favor on you. He said, even the rich among the people shall entreat thy favor. Favor is not lavished on people's laps. You position yourself to commit God to unleash his favor on your life. Where do I stand? Seek ye for the kingdom of God. Take pleasure in the matters of the kingdom. Favor every bit of commandment that comes through. Commit yourself as a lifestyle to them as a lifestyle. And then God will begin to unleash fearful favor on your life. We serve a covenant keeping God, not a Father Christmas God. We serve a covenant keeping God. No reason is sufficient for God to bend this covenant for your sake. You may be on a sick bed and you pray, Oh God, save the lost today in the services. Oh God. You will come out of it like a joke. You will come out of it like a joke. Please don't hang around and say, God understands my position. He doesn't understand. The scriptures cannot be broken. My covenant will I not break. As long as your heart is panting after God, you have committed God to your way yes, As long as your heart is panting after God in truth and in deed, you have committed God to your way -being. One of my sons here was soaked with paralysis and he gathered himself and still came to church. Amen. Why serving the Lord and trying to put people into the bus and all that stuff? Look, no reason will be strong enough for God to deny himself as far as the covenant is concerned. So wake up. You see, if I were aware now, I know what I would do. That's why you are not aware. Do what you should do, and you'll be aware. Do what you should do, and you'll be aware. Do it. God who sees it in secret, he will reward you openly. Amen. Do what you should do. The reason why I'm not giving this, God knows that. Look at my situation. That's why the situation remains. One woman gave the last that she got, and the heavens opened. And she enjoyed abundance for three and a half years, sir. For free, for free, for free, for free. Just obey God, leave the rest to him. Obey God and leave the rest to him. Can I say this? In seeking first the kingdom of God lies the meeting of all needs of your life. And I'm telling you the truth. All these things, not most of these things, all these things, shall be. He said, your heavenly father know that you have need of these things, but seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. 
Now, light has entered you, darkness has left you. Amen. I said, darkness has left you. Yeah. I said, darkness has left you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Lift up your right hand to heaven. Thank God for his world. The light has gotten, gotten, gotten in, darkness has stepped out. The hammer has gotten, the barriers are broken in pieces. The fire is gone in, the chaff is consumed with unquenchable fire. In Jesus' precious name. Now, listen to this. God's favor. is ordained for God's people. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her, yea, the said time is come. Sin brought us into misfortune. Only salvation can bring us back into favor. Thou shall compass the righteous about with favor as with a shield. Jesus is our righteousness. It is the lot of every believer to flow in favor. If you are here today and you want to be part of this favored army of God on the earth, all you need is open your heart to Jesus. He will step in, save your soul, and bring you into favor as you position yourself for it. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. Wherever you may be this afternoon you want to surrender your life to Christ, please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.